cream fondant, and these are the ingredients you need to start. We need whipping cream. We'll need a cup of whipping cream, milk, half a cup of milk, carrot syrup, half a cup of carrot syrup, and four and a half cups of sugar, and a fourth a teaspoon of salt. Now you can make any flavor you like. Today we're gonna to make orange cream, so we need orange flavoring and some orange dye to give it that orange color. But you can make coconut, maple, cherry, or even lemon. Any flavor you can find in the grocery section. Okay, you wanna start with a good heavy duty pan. And an excellent choice is an old pressure cooker. Um, kind of a pan, it has a good heavy bottom and just a wooden spoon. You can use regular whipping cream or heavy whipping cream. Today we've got heavy whipping cream. And one half cup of milk, one half a cup of carol syrup or corn syrup, four and a half cups of sugar. It's best to put the liquid ingredients first because then the sugar won't gather around the side. You'll have less chance of uh, your recipe going to sugar on you. And then we need just a fourth teaspoon of salt. Now you just put this on the stove at a, between a medium high and high. You can cook it as fast or as slow as you like. The faster you cook it, the lighter the candy will be in color. The slower you cook it, the more it'll caramelize and it'll have a little more of a yellow texture. Now we just stir this and get it to a boil and then we'll put our thermometer in and bring it to a softball state. When you're making this fondant, you don't have to stir it nearly as much as you do the toffee, but you do need to kind of keep the ingredients going and I stir it a little more in the beginning than when it gets boiling. Once it gets boiling and I put the uh, thermometer in there, I uh, stir it a lot less. Okay, now we're just going to uh, wash down the sides a little bit to keep any sugar from crystallizing around the edges. Now we've got to go into a boil, we'll put the thermometer in there and watch it. Well, as you can see, when it starts to boil, it takes up quite a bit of the pan, so you want a good sized pan. I would say this is at least um, four quarts. Okay, we're gonna, we've got the thermometer in there, and we're watching it uh, cook. We're going to bring it to about 228 degrees, which is a softball stage, and we'll check it just to make sure by dropping it in cold water and see that it forms a softball. Now we're trying to bring it up to 228 degrees. As you can see on the thermometer, they have pre, they have pre-marked the softball stage, but that's not marked for me because we've tested the thermometer and softball stage is in this case 228 degrees. So we're going for for me because we've tested the thermometer. We're going to check the softball stage. So we drop a little bit of the liquid down in there, and it's not quite ready yet. We can see that it's just dissolving in the water. It's just in the beginning stages, but that's not quite as firm as we want it to get. It's getting there. Looking for the softball stage. We're getting there. A couple more minutes. Drop it in there, test it for the softball stage. It's pretty soft. That right there is just about softball stage, so that's what we're looking for. Now we're going to pour it into a 9 by 13 Pyrex pan. Just any pan you've got to work with, this works fine. When you pour it, you don't want much to splash up on the edge. And whatever you do, do not scrape the pan. Just take that extra and put it in the sink. And what we want to do is put this in a real cool place until it uh, is cool to the hand underneath. Don't want much movement in the fondant because we don't want to go up on the edge or it might help, might cause it to turn to sugar. We like to set it outside because it's nice and cool up here and just let it. cool pan, it's cool to your hand. Okay, now our fondant has cooled and it's it's cool to the touch. And I place it kind of on a non-skid pad because we're gonna be working it for quite a long time. We don't want it to slide around. We're gonna make these cream centers orange today. So I've got orange flavoring and some orange coloring. And we'll put that in at, later on for a while, but we're gonna begin stirring 
takes quite a long time. It can take up to 40 minutes, but don't give up. It's a good exercise for your arm and that turns out to be a wonderful candy. We're just gonna keep the mixture moving. We wanna stir it until it turns from a kind of a taffy looking mixture into a Play-Doh. And it takes quite a long time and the secret here is just to keep it moving. You don't have to work real hard. You just need to keep the taffy moving. The colder the mixture is when you start, the harder it is to stir. But just stir it. If it's very, very hard, you can turn on the stove and just warm it up for just a moment. And then and it might be a little bit easier to turn. As you turn it, the longer you stir it, the softer it will be and the easier it will be to turn. But it could take up to uh, 30 or 40 minutes. Don't give up on it. The colder it is when you start, generally the harder it is to stir. And if it's really, really stiff, you can set it in just a warm oven for a few minutes and take a little bit of that coldness out and then just bring it back out and start working it. You don't want it to get warm, you just want to heat it up just a small amount. Okay, now we're going to add in the flavoring and the coloring. And we want about two to three teaspoons of, of flavoring. And today we're going to make orange. So, just add it in. We want to make this orange, so we're going to add five drops of yellow and one drop of red. That flavoring is a little bit juicy, so you don't want to go too fast or you'll splash it on yourself. You can also apply oil flavoring at some of your local stores and you can use that as well. Sometimes you gotta make sure you get right down to the bottom so you'll see some white and you wanna mix all that flavoring and color in. So make sure you get all the bottom of it mixed in as well. Sometimes when you're mixing it, if it is taking a long time to set up and it just feels like it's not gonna set up, sometimes you can let it set for just a few minutes and that'll help it. This batch of candy takes about an hour and a half to make from beginning to end. so plan accordingly and you can freeze this candy it'll make up to 100 pieces and you can wrap it up and freeze it a lot of times I'll break it into two into half so I can make 50 candies at a time I can tell when it's going to start to set up a little bit because it just is moving a little bit slower and it's gathering more up into a ball so even though it doesn't look like you're getting any progress you can kind of tell you are because the ball is forming in the middle of the pan a little better We've been stirring this for about 15 or 20 minutes and it still hasn't quite set up but in time it will turn into kind of a pile of play-doh is what it'll look like. If you get a little bit tired you can kind of let it rest a little bit and see if that'll help it to um, set up a little more. Now it's important that when you were cooking this that you got it to the softball stage because now when you're stirring this if it isn't cooked to the right temperature it will not set up. If you cook it too long, it'll crumble. And what we're hoping for is it's going to go to a nice um, soft state. As you stir this, you'll start to see that it's going to start to lose its gloss. And then the final, final product, there won't be shiny. It'll be a, um, a dull orange color. And it'll hold its shape into a ball. Now we've been doing this for about 30 minutes. And if you haven't gotten discouraged, you're starting to see the results of all that stirring. You can see that it's becoming less glossy and it's starting to hold its shape. We're just going to keep stirring it just a little bit longer until we get it to hold its shape well enough to make centers. Now that's just about right. Now you could take that and divide it in half and put it in uh, saran wrap and freeze it so until you're ready to make your centers or you can make it right now. Um, and that's a nice firm candy and it'll taste yummy in the box. Now that we have our orange cream fondant made, I'm going to show you how to shape them into centers. Each batch will make about 100 centers. 
and you can make them all at once or you can freeze it partially and make just half at a time. Now to shape the centers, what we need is just uh, some kind of a tray and I line it with cellophane and spray it with a little cooking oil so that the bottoms won't stick and cornstarch so that you can work with it. A lot of times people are used to using flour the way we're going to use this cornstarch so that the centers won't stick to our hands or the counter. And what I use is a Wilton frosting knife but you can use any kind of uh, knife that has a certain shape that you want. We just take a little cornstarch, put it in the counter, and I like to have a little extra here because it can get a little bit messy, so I kind of just keep a little pile there. Just take a, a small amount of the fondant, and we're going to roll it into the, the shape of a rope. It uh, gets a little bit softer and softer as you go. You want to make it a little bit bigger than your finger because you want it to fit nicely in the cups, the chocolate cups that we're going to make for the candy. Just roll it out like that. Make it as even as possible. And in order to get your candies to look the right, the same shape, we um, take this measurement. You can use a knife, um, but this works really well. And we just mark it. And we, make sure we bring this out this a little bit more. And we just take and mark the candy on the top and I use that as a gauge to mark the candy. And then what we're going to do is cut each one of those pieces off and that's the size of the candy so it'll be evenly shaped. I like to kind of pick them up and put them over because they will start to stick to the counter sticks to the counter. You can kind of go like that and get them off a little bit. And I like to set it on some cornstarch so that it is less sticky. Okay, now we want to roll the center and you just roll it into a ball and then we want to kind of flatten the tops and make it round so that when the chocolate sits on top it gives you something to mark because we're going to mark them with an O so that we know that they're orange creams. So you want to roll it in a ball, kind of flatten it on the top, and make it round. If the ball is round, when you dip the chocolate, the ball will go through and usually uh, bottom out underneath the chocolate, and it'll leak out from the bottom of the chocolate. So you want to make kind of a flat top and a flat bottom. And then they're going to want to sit. We've got to let them sit long enough to form just a little bit of a crust uh, so that they'll their shape when they dip. Sometimes they're a little bit too soft right after they've been formed, so we want to kind of watch them. Take the center, kind of roll it into a ball. We want to flatten the top and bottom. The top we want to write a letter on, and the bottom we want flat so that the chocolate will stay on that and not leak through. Now that we've got them shaped, we want them to set for probably um, a couple of hours. Sometimes they take longer to set up than others, but you'll just kind of want to feel. But we want them to have just a little bit of a, a hardness around the edge, a little bit of a crust so that when we dip them, they'll hold their shape. So we just take them down and put them in a cool area, not cold because they've got to be dipped at room temperature, but um, just a cool area to let them get a little firm. It's very important that when you dip, the candy centers are at room temperature because the, the uh, candies are colder than or warmer than they will um, uh, react with the chocolate and the chocolate will probably go plump. Well thanks for watching my mom's video. This means a lot to her. She's been doing it for over 20 years. We hope that the tips that you've received are helpful and we would love to hear tips from you on how we can make our video better. So please log into our website and we'll look forward to seeing you again.